Welcome to another edition of Panther Sports Talk. On this week's edition, we talk FCS football playoffs with head coach Dino Babers. Also, we take a look at the track season upcoming. All that and much more right here on Panther Sports Talk. Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's is a complete car facility for all your automotive repair and maintenance needs. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running. Welcome to another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. I'm your host, Rich Moser. We're joined by EIU football coach Dino Babers. Coach, last week we did a segment. We did it over after the, the playoff selection show and a lot of what-ifs about the two opponents that you could have possibly played, Butler and Tennessee State. And so I know you were very general and complimentary of both teams. Now it's a week later. We're doing the show. You know Tennessee State's your opponent. I, I think I got the sense that that's who the guys wanted to play. I don't know if the coaching staff really cared one way or the other, but I guess a little bit extra, a little easier for the staff in preparation in terms of the fact you already know Tennessee State, so you can focus a little bit different on how you prepare for the game. You know, uh, we know a lot about them, and they know a lot about us. Uh, Butler was really overmatched in the game. Uh, from a physical skill standpoint, they really didn't have much chance of uh, beating Tennessee State. And I think that our football team just feels like there's been unfinished business with them. This is a very good football team, and it's the second best team in our conference, regardless of what anyone else wants to say. And it's real, it's kind of strange that they'd put the number one team in the conference versus the number two team in the conference. But we understand that whoever they put in front of us, we need to win, and we need to win three to have an opportunity to, to get to our goal. And uh, we just look at this as another opportunity to try to play winning football. It's totally different than the season. We had the greatest season in the history of EIU. 11 and one, multiple uh, guys, all conference players. Uh, Jimmy, obviously, offensive player of the year. Eric Laurel, offensive player of the year last year. All that stuff is done. All that stuff is buried. Our, our season and our record is zero and zero. And we're playing a team that has the revenge factor. We have a t we're playing a team that, that wants to get some payback against us. And we need to just go out and play EIU football and uh, let the chips fall where they may. Now, Eastern was given the number two seed in the playoffs. They, they got a bye. This is something that's a little bit different in, the, in terms of the fact that Eastern's never gotten a bye going in the playoffs. And I guess for you, maybe a little bit different from the FBS level. When you go to a bowl game, both teams have, you know, two, three, four weeks off to prepare for the game. Is there an advantage or a disadvantage to having played last weekend and kind of gotten your feet wet in the playoffs? I know the rest helped you guys get healthy, but... Is there a little bit of maybe an advantage that Tennessee State has that they're kind of already got their feet wet in the playoffs and had some success? Uh, I've, absolutely. I think they played last, last week. They got a, a half a game out of it, so to speak. They scored 31 points on offense. They got to have their senior quarterback come back and have success. Their defense pitched another shutout, so those guys are walking around with a lot of confidence. Their coaches put in a, a game plan and a scheme, and it worked. So uh, we, had to, we sat at home. We watched the games. Uh, we weren't uh, playing against another football team, so there may be a little rust on us. We do have a blessing. We, we, we came healthy, and I think that was the most important thing from the bye. I think maybe this is our most dangerous game because of the bye and the rust of not playing last week. If we can find a way to win this game, then we may have a chance. Now, you talked about the guys that benefited from the, the time off. Kendra Gober missed a, a couple weeks. Um, he could have played last weekend had you guys played. Eric Laura missed the last game of the season. Taylor Duncan missed the last two. Those guys, some of those guys could have played had you needed them and it was a must win, but the time off probably helps them get healthy. But for the guys in particular, receivers, Keandre probably more so than Eric, does missing the three or four games going to throw off his timing a little bit with Jimmy? Is that something that, that kind of watches you look in the start of this next game? I, I think it's definitely a concern. Uh, you know, Keandre is a very fast individual and did not, he moves faster than everyone else. So to throw to him, you have to practice throwing to him. So 
Uh, we hope that uh, there's some muscle memory involved and that Jimmy and Keandre can have an opportunity to hook up again in practice Tuesday and Wednesday and kind of work out the kinks a little bit. But I think it's definitely an advantage for Tennessee State. Now, you last week you kind of did a little bit different type of schedule. You guys practiced Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Then you sent the kids home really to kind of get a little bit refreshing, refreshing feel away from school, away from practice. And I, I think probably that's, that's going to be a good thing for them. I think you see teams when they're on campus and nobody else is around that it, it's kind of hard to go through the motions of practice and things like that when you're the only person in, on campus going through anything. Well, it's a good thing if we win. It's, it's everybody's going to talk about you made a mistake if we lose. But uh, I just felt that they need to be rewarded for the season. I mean, to have such a fantastic football season and, and to have to sit on campus while everybody else was going home for Thanksgiving and, and to have a lot to be thanks, thankful for. I mean, so I thought let's practice them hard. Uh, and, and, and we did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and now let's send them home and have a Thanksgiving meal with mom. If, you, if mom can't get you fired <laughs> up, if mom can't get you rejuvenated, I don't know who can. And then come back with a fresh mind, fresh legs and fresh mind. So we've got fresh legs. Mentally, we should be excited, happy. And uh, let's see if we can get that physical work done in the first part of the, of the week and have a, uh, a performance that we're, we're happy with. Now, you mentioned earlier, Tennessee State has their senior quarterback back, Michael German. He's only played six games so far this year. He did not play in the game where Eastern beat Tennessee State down in Nashville. Do you have some film on him? I know you guys had kind of prepped that it might be him or the freshman quarterback in the game there. It ended up being the freshman. So that's who your guys have seen. But is there some film on now that the senior quarterback, and does he give them some different dimensions? I think that I think the best the uh, the best pitcher of German is is the Butler game. You really got to see what he brought to the team. He's, he's more of a pocket guy. He has the ability to run, but he's more of a pocket guy that wants to sit in there and deliver the throw. He's a great game manager. You know, he's not going to make mistakes. He's not going to throw the ball up for grabs. He's going to give you, preserve the right to punt, so to speak. So from a coaching standpoint, you, he's not going to make a lot of mistakes out there for you. And I think that settled their offense down a little bit. And, uh, and obviously with them uh, performing, get scoring 31 points on Butler, that I think it's something that they're going to go to again in our football game. Now, you guys have got to watch that game. Are there other guys that are – that are now back that maybe you didn't see in our game that you, you, you know the numbers of the guys and you're like hey that that guy played in that game I don't remember him in that game that you're gonna have to now open that up to the team and expose them to those guys yeah, absolutely there were some guys that were hurt I think they were down three to four starters the first time we played them and uh, supposedly all those guys are back they might be a little banged up but they're all back so this will be the very first time that we've seen Tennessee State at full strength and uh, that's why it's a little bit unfortunate. I think that either one of our two football teams in the other bracket could have made some waves and could have went really deep. So we're not going to get to see that. We're not going to get to see that opportunity. Somebody in the OVC is going to get a chance to advance to the next round. And uh, the OVC will be excited. But for East Illinois to be excited, we really want it to be us. Now, Eastern is the number two seed in the tournament, 11 wins during the regular season. A lot of accolades came to the team and also to individuals. You guys set a lot of records during the season. The focus is to now put that behind you. Like you said, this is a new season. You're 0-0. Tennessee State having played last week, they're 1-0. and It's a tournament to see who can win four or five games and then hoist the trophy at the end of the year. There's, <laughs> there's no doubt. And uh, we just got to look at it that way. Uh, you have to put the past behind you and you need to deal with the present and look into the future. And our presence is we're playing a team that's 1-0. We're 0-0. They've got a game underneath their belt. We don't because they've been in the playoff. We haven't. We've never won in the playoffs. Our last playoff experience was a very, very bad taste. And nobody wants to taste that again. And uh, we, will, we, will relive, we will relive those moments and try to make sure that we have our best foot forward when we step on the field on Saturday. Now, we are going to look back at some of the moments, though, because you need to talk about some of the guys and things that they were able to do. The all-OVC team was named after we did the show last week. Nine players were on the first team. Like you, you had already mentioned that Jimmy was the offensive player of the year, and I think there was no, no doubt about that. We sat in there on the conference call, and the biggest debate was, should anybody else even be on the ballot for – the backup quarterback and I think the same conversation was kind of for the offensive player of the year that he was really the only player on the ballot he kind of had separated himself that much this year 
Jimmy's seasons is is has been unmatched, and from a if he gets an opportunity to throw for 500 yards, and then uh, Taylor Duncan gets an opportunity to uh, rush for another 200 yards and gets a thousand yards back, I can't wait for you to go hunt up those stats to see if there's ever been a football team with a 5,000 yard rusher and two 1,000 yard rushers, a 5,000 yard passer, two 1,000 yard rushers, with the opportunity to have two wide receivers go over a thousand yards with three, okay, with Laura, Drake, and Keandre. So, I mean, from an offensive standpoint, wow. And I think all those uh, accolades are deserved. From the defensive standpoint, I thought they really got it right, uh, putting a Jordan Whitcliffe and uh, Nick Beard and Rob Haynes and Pat Wirtz and Dino Fonte. I don't think I missed anybody, have I? Nope. The, putting those guys, I think all those, all those uh, awards were well-deserved on defense. And now we just need to understand that that's the way we look at it. That's great. And that's 2013. And we're trying to play into our 2014 season on January 4th. Now, the offensive line also recognized across the board there. Four of the five guys got some sort of honor. Two of them were on the first team and Don Pagliara and Colin Seibert. And then Nick Borey at center was second team. And then Jim Lowry made the all newcomer team. And that that's a credit not only to what the offense has done, but what they've been able to do behind those guys. There, there's no doubt. And I, I don't want to leave out Alex Pierce, one of our seniors. You know, I was telling the football team that it's, you know, as they get older, they'll learn about the politics in life. You know, you try to keep things black and white, and we do operate in a black and white situation on the football team. But as you get deeper into your older in your ages, you start getting into the politics. I really felt that we got a lot of players recognized on our football team. But from a political standpoint, they're not going to recognize everybody. They're not going to say your whole offensive line was better than everybody in the season or your, your corners were better than everybody in the season. It just got to the point where there were so many guys being recognized that they had to stop somewhere. And I just feel, for, I feel, I feel sorry for some of the guys that really should have been recognized, but for political reasons, they probably didn't get an opportunity to be uh, put out on a pedestal or put a habit, shine a spotlight on. But uh, I really think that this f football team, mine, is in the right, right place. I think that we're going to handle our business. I think we understand that all that stuff is great, but now it's time to put the shoulder pads back on and play. It would just break my heart to not see this football team uh, succeed and do the things that it's capable of doing. But that's why we'll play the game, and we'll have to find out on Saturday. All right, on Saturday we will find out. One o'clock will be the kickoff over there at O'Brien Field. You can get your tickets through the EIU ticket office. You can get information on EIUPanthers.com. Coach is going to promise a nice sunny day out there at the field because that's what he, he – I know it – yeah, we, are, we already know what the weather's going to be like, Coach. But anyway, at least the forecast, they, those people are known to be wrong. But hopefully we'll have a big crowd out there. I know that the student union through uh, Mark Hudson over at the Student Life and Dr. Dan Nadler, they're providing some, stu some student tickets for students that can show up at the game and get in for free with their student ID. Um, it is an NCAA playoff game, so everybody has to pay in some form or another to get in to watch the contest. That, that's how these things work, unfortunately, as you move along. But a great football team to see. One o'clock will be the kickoff. Because of that, the men's basketball game has moved to seven o'clock, and we're trying to get people to both events, come out, watch the football game, have a good time, come in, thaw out at the basketball game at seven o'clock against Indiana State. We hope you'll be out there, Coach. Hopefully we'll be talking to you guys next week. We'll talk to Coach the, the rest of the season as it goes along. We won't know the opponent or a time or a date for any future games until after our game is completed on Saturday, so we'll have that information for you as well. We'll be right back with This Week in EIU Athletics. Panther fans, here's what's going on in Panther Athletics. Men's basketball drops to 3-4 and four on the season, losing 71-65 to to Indiana-Purdue Fort Wayne at Lance Arena and 68-53 at Western Kentucky. Women's basketball drops to 2-5 and five on the season with two losses at the University of Missouri-Kansas City Tournament, 79-46 to UAB and 69-62 to the host Kangaroos. Now here's what to watch for this week. Tonight, Wednesday, December 4th, men's basketball at longtime rival Western Illinois in Macomb at 7 o'clock. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU. On Thursday, swimming is at the U.S. Senior Nationals. On Friday, track gets their season underway as they host the EIU Early Bird Meet at the Lance Fieldhouse starting at 3 o'clock. 
On Saturday, Panther football in the second round of the FCS playoffs as they host OVC rival Tennessee State at 1 o'clock. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9, WEIU, or you can watch it online at ESPN3. Men's basketball at Lance Arena as they take on longtime rival Indiana State at 7 o'clock. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9, WEIU. For Panther Sports Talk, I'm Ramin Karbasyun. We wrap up this week's edition of Panther Sports Talk with a preview of the upcoming track meet on Friday night at Lance Indoor Fieldhouse. Also, we look at some of the big plays from the past football season, the regular season where the Panthers finished 11-1. Reminder, the FCS football playoff game, 1 o'clock out there at O'Brien Field this weekend, followed by the basketball game against Indiana State at 7 o'clock. Hope to see everybody out on the campus this weekend. Yeah, you track and field is coming off another huge season last year, and they'll be looking to repeat that success this time around. The main thing is they, they have to remember the hard work that it takes to win a championship. And each year we lose some outstanding seniors. We've got to replace them. We need to have youngsters step up and, and fill their shoes, uh, maybe become our new heroes. Uh, but it just does it's not handed to them. They've got to, they've got to do the work to get there. They've got to do all the little things to help separate themselves from the rest of the field. So um, they've been working hard all this fall. Uh, we've still got a long way to go, but uh, right now I think you know this this first day of time trials is sort of a good indication. I think we're off to a pretty good start. Coach Aker says that while his squad's lost some talented seniors, he thinks there are plenty of new faces ready to step up and make an impact. I think we have a number of surprises on both the men's and women's side. I don't want to sort of put the jinx on anybody or added pressure on anybody, but, uh, but I think it should be exciting. You know, we'll see December 6th when we have our first outside competition come in, uh, if they're all healthy and ready to go. Um, but uh, I think there's a number of people that will surprise other people. I don't know if they'll surprise the coaching staff as much because coaches tend to be a greedy sort. You know, we, we look at a kid and their potential and hope they always accomplish a great deal. Uh, so I don't see too many surprises for us, but hopefully we'll have a few surprises for the rest of the rest of the crew. Each year it's always a, a different area of strength. Um, you know, we lost some, some great senior distance runners on the women's side. We've got a really young crew of young ladies uh, that have done an outstanding job through our cross country season, so we're excited about them. Uh, but they're, they're freshmen and sophomores. Uh, uh, you know, out on the track, uh, Dia Dean and Kristen Paris are, have been having a great fall and looking pretty good. They, they ran really well in the 400 today. Uh, and then a whole group of young ladies close behind them in the 400, probably as much depth as we've had in that event area right now. And we still have a few girls uh, that are have a few minor injuries that we're not competing right now. So uh, I think a lot of excitement on the women's side. Our pole vaulters are strong with Jade coming back and uh, same thing on the mint side with Nick returning. Uh, that area should be very strong for us. So uh, time will tell. On the men's side, uh, really strong right now in the sprints. We've got a lot of uh, new faces that highly touted sprinters coming out of high school, but uh, they're now at a different level. So uh, we'll see how they react to uh, a little bit tougher competition week in and week out. And then a junior college transfer, Norvell Mohammed, uh, is really going to be a great one-two punch with Calvin Edwards for us. And I think those two guys will push each other really well during practice as well as in meets and really help, um, help them be um, the best athlete that they can be. So we're really excited to see what those two guys do in the two and the 400. While the Panthers have plenty of talent, it was stressed that everyone still needs to put in the work over their holiday breaks to stay on top of their game. The regimen, uh, just like I said before, just stay active. Don't sit on your butt all day and watch TV, stay out late, go to bed early, and just be active. Don't not for a long time, but just at least do something over the break. So you come back, you don't have to, um, you won't be out of shape to uh, 
um, break what you already worked on before break. It's tough over the vacation holidays, uh, a full week for Thanksgiving and then the full three weeks, three and a half weeks, I think for Christmas, it's extra long this year. Uh, and then we come back and we have two weeks of practice and we're into our season. So, um, you know, we can't have people come back with a, a boatload of excuses on why they didn't get things done. You know, if there's a foot of snow on the ground, uh, you can go out and get the effort in. You may not run as fast or as far, but uh, you can get your legs pumping and your heart working. So, you know, it, it takes that dedication to uh, continue to be where we're at. And, and ideally, we come back from vacation without losing any ground training-wise where we are, um, which is why it's nice to have our early bird meet before they go home. And then the meet when we come back, we generally find out who did the work over the holidays and who didn't. I feel very um, confident about this team that we, men and women on this team, are going to pull out another OVC championship. Set. Reporting for Panther Sports Talk, I'm Brad Kupia. Can Garoppolo, he's going deep, got Gober behind the defense, got it at the 30, 20, DeAndre Gober on his way for the touchdown. Shepard Little to the 45, right sideline 40, to the 30, to the 20, to the 15, broken tackle, 10, 5, touchdown, Eastern Illinois, no flag. Steps up, now he's going to throw it deep in the end zone, Drake got it, touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Good pass, play down, kicks up, kick is... Good! Panthers win! Yes! Yes! Here comes the blitz. Jimmy's going to throw it deep down the middle. Laura's out there. Got it! And he's on his way. Garoppolo burns the blitz. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Garoppolo sets up the pass. Marker down. Throwing the bomb. Gober behind everybody. Got it at the 45-40. Breaks away 30. Gober will score. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. He's going to throw into the end zone. And... Touchdown, Eric Laura. And they fake a handoff. Garoppolo gets the middle. Break over to the 30. 25 20. And the right 15. 10. 5. Touchdown. Four man run. Pump fake. Going the bomb. Going for Laura. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. There's the snap. Jimmy looking and throwing to the right side for Laura. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Looking, throwing the bomb. Going for Gober. Back of the end zone. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Jimmy Garoppolo sets the record for Eastern Illinois in the Ohio Valley Conference with his 86th career touchdown pass. Pressure, grab, sack. Down he goes. Tipped into the air. Intercepted by Gristick. Finally getting down his fumble. Penalty flag. Eastern picks up the fumble, and they're on their way for a touchdown. It's Anthony Goodman who picks the fumble out of the air, and he takes it all the way back for a touchdown. Garoppolo back to pass, setting up a screen over the middle, a little at the 45, lockers in front, 40, 35, 30, little, 25, 20, racing to the end zone. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Touchdown. He's going to dodge a man, throws, hit as he throws, deep right for Laura, leaping grab at the goal line. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. And that play, Eric Laura becomes the all-time receiving yards leader in Eastern Illinois history. Four-man rush. Gonna throw to the right, gets caught by Laura. First down, breaks a tackle, 50, 45, 40. Off the of block, 30, he's gone. Eric Laura, all the way. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Buffalo back, a lot of time, going to deep. Got Drake out there, got it, 40, 30. Adam Drake going all the way. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. They blitz Garoppolo. He's back, steps up. He's throwing the bomb. Got Gover out there. Got it, 20, 15. Steps out of a tackle. It's a touchdown for Eastern Illinois. Four-man rush, some pressure. He steps up, and they sack him on the 30-yard line. It's John Boitilla again. They hand on a draw up the middle. Little at the 20, right through the middle. 15, 10 to the 5. Little lowers his shoulder. Pounds over. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Eastern blitzing, back to pass, big pressure, and Odeo Taylor sacks him at the 38. Pump fake, goes it to the right, wide open lead pack, 10, 5, touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Garoppolo back, stands in the pocket, guns it deep middle, caught, touchdown. Eric Laura with the catch at the two-yard line and goes in standing up. Laura up the middle of the 25, looks for room, finds a 30, 35, 40. Laura in the clear at the 50, needs to beat the punter. Around him at the 30, and he will score, and there's no flags this time. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Frazier on the shotgun call, fourth down and a push to go. They're going to give it to Barry, and he is stoned at the four-yard line. He fumbled the ball in the end zone, it's free. Panthers have it, a touchdown for Eastern Illinois, I think. Still loose, wait a minute. It's loose in the end zone, it's a safety. Murray recovered it. 
Here's Garoppolo on first down. Gives to Little. Good hole up the middle. Angles left 50. And Shepard to the 45. 40. In a foot race. 30. Shepard Little down the left sideline. 20 to the 10. To the 5. Dives in zone. Touchdown. Eastern Illinois. Out of the pistol. Little again. Another good hole. Now he will break away. He'll score. 20, 10, 5, the third touchdown of the day for Shepard Little. Second and seven at the 10, toss to Little, heading to the right. He wants to throw a pass, going back to Garoppolo on the left sideline, and he caught it at the goal line. Touchdown, there's a penalty flag. Jimmy Garoppolo might have just caught his first touchdown pass. He's back, pressured, and he's going to be sacked. Tino Fonte got him at the 37-yard line. Below back to pass, on the bomb to the goal line, caught by Lee Pack. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Garoppolo back, two-step drop, throwing the fade, going for Drake, and he's got it. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. There it is, Panthers blitz him. He's back, pressure by Gristick, and they got him. They sack him with Adam Gristick. And the Panthers wrap up an 11-1 regular season, the first EIU team ever to win 11 regular season games. Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's is a complete car facility for all your automotive repair and maintenance needs. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running.